Hey guys, Todd Fossey here. I am the founder of Integrative Defense Strategies, also known as IDS. And we are here at IDS headquarters just outside of Minneapolis, Minnesota. This is Kelly Johnson, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt and 2019 IBJJF world champion. What you don't see here on video is prior to cameras rolling, I let Kelly know I was carrying a CERT training pistol and handed it to him so that he could see for himself. Then I said, if you can get my gun, get it. Really, all I can do is play defense against someone like Kelly. And if you've never grappled against a person with this level of skill, it's almost impossible to understand just how dangerous they are. There are so many traps and attacks everywhere I turn. I'm really just looking to survive. Here's how I look at it. If I can experience brief flashes of success against people at this level who know I'm carrying and know how to get it away from me, that makes my chances for a positive outcome in a real world critical incident that much better. IDS is part lab and part school. And this is an experiment. In this experiment, I'm exploring and practicing one, concealment of my weapon. I don't want my adversary to know I have it. It's my ace in the hole. Two, retaining and accessing my weapon while at the same time preventing him from getting his weapon and doing damage to me with strikes and submissions. It's basically a shit sandwich. Three, I'm looking to maintain a good posture. Four, working to a good position. Five, looking to escape and get back to my feet. Six, submit or incapacitate him when I'm legally justified to do so. All right, so let's just dive into this here. Okay, so you see me doing a lot of hand fighting here. Um, I really feel the need to monitor and control Kelly's hands. That's what he's going to hurt me with. That's what he's going to get my gun with. Throw a couple of snap elbows here just to give him something to think about. Fill the space with that. And then you see him throw one back. I post on his legs and make a little move here by attempting to get into half guard, but Kelly's too good and keeps a foot in between my legs. Okay, so I'm just going to freeze this right here. I just want you to notice that I've established a two-on-one cross wrist tie on Kelly's hand. That's closest to my weapon for weapon retention purposes. And then you see me posture up right here. I'm keeping my arms close and I'm keeping my weapon side slightly shaded away from him and I'm blocking him with my head a little bit. Kelly breaks down my posture and I make the mistake of touching the ground with my right hand. And then you see him here pull me in and lock me up with an overhook on my right arm. So I'm gonna freeze frame this. I'm in real trouble here. So I decide to frame on his face. I figure if I can control his head, I have a chance. In a street fight, this would be a combination of framing on his head and strikes, uh, probably elbows. Also, I can indirectly monitor his hand closest to my weapon, but I'm at risk of him reaching for my gun here. I'm thinking if he reaches for it, I'll push his head away, hopefully keeping him out of reach. The next mistake I make is posting with my left leg. Kelly takes full advantage and sweeps me, easily taking mount. Look at this really great base Kelly has. I'm doing my best to frame up and get my gun side down. I'm always looking for a way to use the ground for retention. Kelly traps me with this beautiful gift wrap. I'm stuck and in serious trouble in this position. Then he traps my gun side arm on the ground. As soon as he moves into the technical mount position, I buck him. This creates space and forces him to release the gift wrap so I don't roll him. It also allows me to get my hips more perpendicular to his, again with my gun side down. Kelly sits back and I feel him moving for the choke. At this point I'm thinking, one, I'm reasonably in immediate fear of death or great bodily harm. Two, I've protected my weapon in a way that has allowed me to access it. Three, I have to make my move now or I'm done. I arch to create space to access my weapon as Kelly traps my arm. Now you'll see here, I'm pointing my weapon at his foot. Here's why. I need to stop the threat as quickly as possible, and his foot is my closest target. 
It's difficult to see at this angle, but I do have the muzzle adequately pointed away from my junk. It's close, but it's a do or die moment and I have to take my chances. If this goes on even a second longer, I'm going to get choked out. Next, if I point the weapon at his vital areas, there's a good chance he's going to grab the gun and retention is still a priority. Remember, I'm not practicing jujitsu. I'm using elements of jujitsu for self-defense. He does get his hands on the gun here, but I already have four or five rounds into his foot and leg. So we reset. I could have moved to a different position, but I wanted to practice learning from a compromised position. You can see he submits me here with this shoulder lock. So we reset and I go back to monitoring his hands. Kelly prevents me from pulling full guard, but I am able to at least get my gun side down and get a knee shield established. Freeze. I've been pulling three core principles here. One, I'm getting my hips perpendicular to his. Two, I'm getting a frame in between us, which is my knee. Three, I'm monitoring his hand closest to my weapon. This is also a position I can defend strikes and get up from pretty well. Kelly gets low, so I stuff and frame off his head, allowing me to escape, but he skillfully rolls out of it. Freeze. In a real world situation, I would have stood up and either disengaged, accessed my weapon, or continued to engage from a standing position, depending on what the circumstances called for. But this isn't a scenario. This is a roll, so I keep going. Kelly tries to pull guard, but I stuff it and pass, but he's too good and traps my right arm with his legs. I simulate a little ground and pound with some easy down elbows to motivate him to release my arm. I move around to pinch his head, but I feel him start reaching for my weapon with his right hand, so I dismount and extend his arms slightly out of reach. Again, trying to free my arm, but Kelly's practicing good defense here, so I continue to rehearse dropping elbows. I try to put some head pressure on him here to get him to release my arm again, in a real world incident, these would be headbutts. I want to add that as a part of my thought process, Kelly has attempted to go for my weapon, which is displaying lethal intent. So at this point, I can articulate need and justification to transition to my weapon if I can get my arm free. But look, he has my arm trapped with his leg and both arms, and he's putting a lot of pressure on my shoulder. I almost had to tap here. I make the mistake of shifting my weight just enough for Kelly to sweep me here. Fortunately, I had enough space to keep my hips moving and get my knee in and my gun side down. I go for his head, but I'm unable to get a good frame with my arm. I feel Kelly go for the kill. He's setting me up for a triangle right here freeze i know at this point i need to keep my right arm free so i can start transitioning to my weapon right away because within a few seconds i will be unconscious kelly is able to deflect my weapon before i can get hits on him had i gone for his hip instead of his torso my weapon would have been effective in stopping the triangle the hip and pelvic girdle is a great target when you're in extreme close quarters Another mistake I made is allowing my weapon to hover instead of indexing it on my upper torso. This would have helped retain and control the weapon. I got greedy. I know better. I end up having to tap because that triangle is so tight and brilliantly executed, I almost lost consciousness. Kelly is a beast. Against anyone else, I would have been successful. Much respect to Kelly. Lessons learned. This is why we train. We reset. Again, I'm just monitoring his hands the best that I can and trying to block his attacks. 
I can feel him setting me up. He smells blood. He goes for a lightning fast arm drag, so I decide to fall back into my guard. In a real world self-defense situation, I would have started throwing kicks and worked to my feet, but I wanted to keep the role going. This is a great opportunity to learn and grow. You can see what a great guy Kelly is. So I'm gonna watch this video over and over again to improve my flaws. For those of you who carry, I hope you picked up a few things that you can work on that might save your life one day. Or at least, I hope that you recognize the importance and the distinction in weapons-based grappling. For those of you who practice Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I hope you see how dangerous going for submissions in a self-defense situation can be. Weapons-based grappling is its own art and the context changes the strategy. And finally, a huge thank you to Kelly Johnson for this great opportunity to learn and be humbled. This is Todd Fossey. Until next time, be safe and go train. Oh,